Well, hey guys, we're still going. I haven't been able to get back to this uh, for a couple weeks, so kind of very happy to be able to tonight. So what we've got going on tonight, I'm trying to get ready to stand this next section, this next half bent, and then I have one bent left to stand. We've got rain moving in. We're going to try to get done what we can. I have to cut three of these, these girts out tonight. And what a girt is, a girt connects your wall post from wall post to wall post below the tie beam. So um, a lot of times they made the mistake of calling them a plate. A plate goes above the tie beam and it's generally on top of the post. So anyhow, we're going to get cutting this thing. Um, not sure if we're going to get to uh, standing this up tonight because here comes the rain. It's always something around here slowing this damn project down. So my total measurement on this guy is 149 and a half. And I'm breaking a cardinal rule here and hooking the tape measure when I should be clamping it. But this rain's coming in fast. And it looks like I'm not going to be able to get much done. Always something. Ah, shit. Starting to pour. Time to clean up. I tell you what, I'm not making any time right now. Tonight we're dodging raindrops. We've got six days of rain in the forecast coming up. And I tell you what, it's getting a little bit discouraging when you cannot, just cannot get a good head of steam up. Very discouraging. So when you're cutting girts out to go in between your wall posts, it's no different than anything else you're cutting out. You're going to have reference face, you're going to have adjacent face, and you're going to have aris. Um, so on this particular, on these girts, I keep the reference face up. It's a horizontal member, so keep the reference face up. And I want to uh, correct a mistake in the, uh, the last Q&A video, which we're going to have another one here pretty quick. Um, I called the uh, the post beams. The wall posts are not beams. They are posts. Any vertical member is going to be a post. Any horizontal member is going to be a beam or a plate. So, just to avoid any confusion for anybody. Until I'm hurrying tonight, this, this weather is killing me. Don't forget to chamfer your edges. Makes it a lot easier to put everything together. Now I see, uh, I see some people will chamfer these edges as well. I don't do that. It might help if I did. Now we're going to hit the other end. The sun's going to peek out, but boy, some good black clouds behind it. <laughs> it's going to be a very quick segment on the girts tonight. Now, if you guys can't tell, I'm not as fussy with these as I am with the rest of the frame. And it's simply, all these are going to do is support the siding. 
And now I got somebody pulling in the driveway. Oh, I tell you what, if I can't get anything done, I'm going to lose my damn mind. All right, we got one girt done. Let's see how this guy fits. So, another little trick when you're working alone trying to do this stuff, you're trying to get everything lined up, that it can be a real pain in the ass to line it all up. So all I do, and I, you may have kind of caught it a little bit in the video when I raised the last half of this section like eons ago, you know, because it takes me forever to get any of this done. So anyhow, can you sense the frustration? You know, I've had like three visitors already tonight. My phone's been going crazy. <laughs> it's that time of year, so... Anyhow, enough of my whining, crying, and complaining, because nobody really cares to listen to that. Well, unless it's me. But, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, uh, I'm going to take a 2 by 4 I have, and I've got this leveled across. Now, something else you want to keep in mind. My first girt I make sure is super straight, no crowns, no bows. The ones after that, it doesn't bother me so much if they're a little bit off. You know what I mean? I don't want them to be, but it doesn't bother me that bad. So the reason I do that. So I kind of touched on it a little bit with the concrete on this project. I had four guys for 38 yards of concrete. It was really hot out. This concrete was setting up fast. The finish on this is abysmal. It uh, Put it this way, by the time the second truck was here dumping, because the first load, the, uh, the concrete driver, he wouldn't loosen it up for us, he just and he dumped it all in one spot. Needless to say, he didn't get to come back here. Uh, but uh, the second truck was already here before we even had the first load screeded off. So excuses, excuses, excuses. But So now I'm dealing with having to cut every wall post a little bit different length. And usually what I use... To line them up, I use a string level and I use a water level. I'll get a rough guesstimate with the string level. You know, if you're going to use a string level, you got to get it super tight. That string has to be super tight because even the weight of that level, if you don't have that line tight enough, the weight of that level will pull it down just a little bit in the middle. So, what I do, I've got a water level with like 40 feet of tubing. So, I use the water level. And I use a benchmark, which is the far corner of the barn. The uh, going to be the northeast corner post of the barn is my benchmark. Everything is leveled off of that point. So what I have to do is I have to trim down my wall post to match up with each other, so that my heights on all my uh, so my top plates and my tie beams all line up. So everything's flush when I go to finish it off. When I go to set rafters, when I go to put my top plates in, everything has to be flush. So where I make up the issues with the concrete is the bottom of the wall post. So I've had to whack three quarters of an inch, an inch. I mean, it's it was a nasty concrete job. It's a good thing it's a barn. And the part that's real important to me, the wood shop, thankfully that's on the second floor where I can make that as pretty and as level as I want. So, but anyhow, I'm rambling again. So what I do to help me Hold this out. I level this first girt. I try to level it really well and I and I get the straightest, straightest possible girt that I can get when I go to put these together. Or when I go to use the first one. Because then I can measure that. I can measure off of the bottom of this to put my next girts in line. And it actually it's worked out very well. And it's kept me uh Pretty level from post to post. But then, of course, like I said, you can't trust your girts. You can't just sit there and trust girts to get your level line across everything. It'll work really close. You could probably get it to within a quarter of an inch if you're taking your time and you're doing it right. But 
confirm and back it up from your benchmark with your string level, your laser level, or your water level. And I said, I'd like to use the water level and the string level in conjunction with each other. And another trick I've learned using the water level, and I really like a water level. Water seeks its own, its own level, so it, it stays. So when you make a water level, and we'll probably do a video on it sometime because now I'm sure I'll get some questions on it, which is great. So the water level, you don't want any bubbles in the, in the line. I use a clear vinyl tubing, like a half inch clear vinyl tubing. And I actually use uh, biodegradable boiler glycol is what I fill it with. It's red, doesn't freeze in the winter time. It works perfect. So, but we'll cover that in another video. And I'll show you guys how you make one and how I use one, which is probably totally wrong by somebody's standards, but that's usually how it goes. So, but anyhow, just a little trick right there with the, uh, the wall girths for holding them up. So I'll put the next one up and then the one after that, and they'll be very close to where they have to be when I go to stand this next section up here, which I am so, so close, so close. I've been shut down by rain twice tonight and all the visitors, so I'm probably not going to get it up tonight, but... Nobody with dirty minds go anywhere with that, please. I terrible, terrible choice of words. I'm too young for those issues yet. But anyhow, gonna get get back to it. So you guys with sawmills ever uh, ever mill up lumber after about a six pack or a twelve pack? Well, I don't either. But sometimes I look at some of the stuff that I've cut, and uh, <laughs> I have to wonder. This uh, 4x6 ended up being about a 4.25x6. Uh, so, in order to keep my uh, in order to keep my girt flush with the outside of the uh, the wall post, I have to put a shoulder right there and do a bit of a reduction on that tenon. So. I'm two inches in off of my face so that it lines up with my, so it stays flush with the wall post. Um, like I said, everything to the outside of the building is going to be flush. And uh, that's why your reference faces on your vertical members are to the outside of the building. And that's why your reference faces for your horizontal framing members are going to be pointed up. That way your, your second floor decking and your roofing I'll do what they need to do, but uh, once in a while, and it seems to be, especially in this, uh, especially in this last few pieces I worked on, I seem to have uh, didn't seem to do the greatest job milling them. So now I'm spending a lot of time monkeying around fixing my mistakes, which I, uh, I would rather show you guys those mistakes so you guys don't make the same ones. So, uh, I'd be a pure liar if I sat here and told you I was some kind of a guru expert at this stuff, because I'm not. I'm just some weekend warrior, wannabe farmer and everything else, and uh, I feel I uh, really need to be honest with you guys when I do mess up, so, like I said, so you guys can see it, know it for what it is, and if you run into the same situations, maybe you will uh, you can avoid them, you know, you'll say, oh yeah, that goofball on YouTube there, he, uh, he messed that up, I better watch out for that, so it's a big reason I like to show my mistakes. I, I think you can learn more from mistakes than anything, especially somebody else's if you're sharp enough to pay attention to them. Ha! <laughs> wow, I didn't even try to level that when I put it on, but she is perfect. I love when that happens. So, when you guys are working alone, you got to find creative, 
creative ways of getting the job done. I've been getting a very good education on doing that with this. All I do is I just run a couple screws in just to hold that girt up. And I can take this piece out, use it on the next one. The exciting part is once I get that piece on the ground right there stood up. I am almost home free for the major portion of the structure because uh, once this is up I have the end bent, the gable bent to go up and I am so happy. Then after that uh, we're going to get into top plates, we're going to get into a different style of scarf joint you guys will be able to see and uh, like I said I picked that one up going down to the timber frame guild raising down in uh, Schuyler, New York or Schuylerville down near Saratoga. Uh, they did a community center raising there. Um, the gentleman from North Carolina Timber Works, or yeah, I think that's what it's called, North Carolina Timber Works, he was down there running the camera all day, so I've got to get on there and see if he's put a, uh, he's got a YouTube channel, and get on there and see if he put one up at all, a video on that, because that was pretty fun. There's probably about 70 people there hand raising, and I didn't bring the camera along because I didn't figure I'd have time to, uh, to film it and I was right it was a lot going on that day but it was pretty cool so but anyhow we're gonna end it here tonight it's starting to get dark out I, uh, I'm gonna get some work lights out get this last girt in and I'm really really hoping if I don't get interrupted like I have many many times tonight tomorrow night it's not supposed to rain it's the only night this week that's not supposed to rain I'm gonna try to get that next section put up and we'll run the camera so I want to try a little something different with the camera work we'll see how it works but it's probably going to involve some duct tape in this phone here and uh, we'll see what develops see if we can get a cool shot so anyhow you guys have a good night if you have any questions leave them in the comments below or you can go to the website there's a link at the end of this video um, you can go to the website you can email me through the website so if you guys have questions don't be afraid to ask I I don't mind them because I didn't really have uh, what many people I could ask before I started this project. I'm kind of winging it here, learning as I go. So I'll help you guys avoid some of the stuff that I screwed up on. So anyhow, have a good evening, guys.